So yes, I am the assistant principal, and and so in in my responsibilities, it's HR, health and safety, and the estate, which I have to say is the perfect triptych in a national pandemic to be looking mm -hmm. after. Um, uh, and so my own resilience is something that I've been clearly having to work on over the last uh, the last year. So I just wanted to share with you some of the things we're doing at the the college. I'm just going to very briefly talk about what is resilience. Um, my next slide was going to show you um, sort of stress in the workplace uh, uh, from the health and safety executive um, point of view, kind of mapped across with the challenges that COVID has presented us with over the over the last year. Um, I was then going to have a little quick canter at maintaining resilience and our capacity to cope and how you build a resilient team. Um, I was going to share with you then the lessons learned um, through the last year um, in terms of kind of staff well-being and and finally on the slides which which we can share um, if we can't show them anyway um, the tools and resources that that we've been using so um, what is resilience and the, the, it's a noun uh, the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties and toughness um, and I was going to talk about emotional resilience which is around a sense of self-awareness setbacks being seen as a learning experience self-reliance rather than that external locus that there's nothing I can do about it it's all been done to me sort of thing um, strong problem solving skills uh, and the ability to react calmly and rationally and, and analytically and creatively when a problem or a crisis happens and those social connections and how important it is to have a social network around you oh look there they are <laughs> thank you um, on the front of that slide it says I'm not a clinical psychologist and I, and I want to emphasize that because I'm really not and I know that there are experts coming behind me that that, that know a lot more than I do um, so th thank you for for fielding my, my my slides. So if we want to go on to the the next slide, um, which uh, so, so and the next one again. And um, the thing about resilience that I meant to say was it is developmental. Um, you have your your kind of childhood foundations that give you your resilience, but your your as you grow up, um, your skills and experience and knowledge can kind of build on that either in a positive or a negative in a negative way. So the health and safety executive talks about um, stress in the workplace, having having these sorts of catalysts. So it might be around workload, feeling a lack of support. Um, there's sort of violence, threats and bullying, but that, you can look at that as more about the relationships within the workplace, changes at work, role uncertainty and lack of control. Um, which is quite important and so as I said what Covid has done for us in in the last year has has we've had to think about loss and bereavement um, we think about our own heightened health risks and those of you know, loved ones around us socialization and limited social support has been has been a huge factor on all of us um, and, and having a social network is so, you know, we're human beings and we're kind of pack animals, but our, our social network is really important to help help us with our resilience and being that having taken away from us has had a massive impact on us. Um, through COVID times, um, I don't know how your businesses are doing, but role uncertainty and job security has been, you know, many people are very fearful about their jobs going forward. The consistent change that we've had and the multiple demands. So it's not just about our workplace, but we've had multiple demands of our home situation our caring, our teaching our children, our looking after our, our, our dependents and our elderly relatives. It's, 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 it's been a lot. So, so we do need to look at how we maintain our resilience. So if we can move to the next one, please. Um, so I, I thought I would just show you the stress bucket. I mean, I don't know what's coming after me, but I, I found this stress bucket quite a useful kind of analogy really to think about um, in managing our own in our ability to manage our own stress and adapt flexibly so if you if you manage the bucket the size of the bucket um, it kind of depends on your vulnerability um, uh, and if you think about the stress flowing into the bucket and you've got a tap that so if you've got good coping mechanisms you open that tap and you let and you let that stress out if if you don't have good coping mechanisms, um, and I can kind of talk about what they might be in a moment, um, then your bucket is going to fill up and it's going to kind of fall out over the top um, and overflow uh, and, and, and end up in, in 
in a very stressful situation. So to boost our resilience, we need to kind of build self-awareness of that, understand stress and some, learn some resilient skills. So resilience is your uh, ability to adapt, persevere, recover and grow after stress or adversity or a trauma. Um, and as I say, it's not a fixed trait, it, it will, it can grow. Um, there are protective factors which can make you more resilient and risk factors that make you less resilient. Um, and they can depend on your individual, your social or your economic and environmental um, factors around you. Um, coping is the process of managing the demands of stress you might feel when faced with adversity. So, so you might feel under stress that you've, you're worrying more, you've got fluctuations in your mood, um, difficulty concentrating, uh, over focus on the negative and get very self-critical or just feeling of kind of hopelessness. Um, when I talk about the tools and things, one of the things that we've been telling staff about is something called the five ways of well-being. So things that you can do to help build your resilience and they are connect. So that's kind of connecting with people and that social network around you being active. We do know that that um, exercise has really good impact on mental health, keeping learning, you know, um, just learning a new skill or, or you know, reading a book or um, learning to do something new um, is, is, is really good for your mental health. Taking notice. So that might be about being being what we now know as being mindful or mindfulness, um, just being being in the present and aware of being aware of what's around you. And the final one is 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 to give. So the more that you support and help other people, the the, the better that you also feel about yourself. So that's just a kind of uh, a helpful way of looking at it. Um, we can move to the next slide. Thank you. Um, so how do you do that in the workplace and how do you build a, a resilient team? I think the really important thing is creating an organisational culture of resilience and well-being, um, which is an environment of trust and safety so that it's all right for people to talk about it. Raise awareness of the importance of staff well-being um, and being aware of your own personal resilience and manage your own emotions first when you're dealing with other people um, and tap into your social and emotional intelligence. So we need to develop our skills to build trust and safety. So I've written there, you know, it's OK to talk, but actually it's even better to listen to people. Listening to people is taking is 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 really important. So so what have we learned from the from the college in, in our work environment over the last year is we know that we can be more productive. I, I think we were a bit fearful about people working from home before, you know, that they'd be sitting at home having tea and toast and doing their washing rather than um, than focusing on the day job but actually we know that's not true particularly if if, if, if you have that kind of environment of trust um, we can actually be more collaborative um, the fact that we're all using teams and zoom now far more um, we're actually connecting with people more that we wouldn't normally kind of see in, in our kind of close office environment so we're seeing people people from other organizations or, or just in other departments or other areas that that, that, that we wouldn't normally see. And actually um, the technology has helped us with that. With the digitalization, we are much more creative about how we meet and communicate and actually th just a bit more thoughtful about it and making sure that it happens. Um, it increased sustainability. I have to say, although I, I did print off my slides to read off them, we have got far less paper and, and far less travel as well. So, um, so sustainability is a kind of a, a, a positive side effect of COVID. And I think generally as a society, I, I believe that it's reminded us of our own human fragility and, and, um, and the importance of being kind to, kind to each other and to look out for each other in a way that I think, I think maybe that we'd forgotten a little bit. And I'd like to think that we've learned what's important, um, or at least I, I think we have. And, and, I, and I think that we probably are more resilient as, as, a, as a result of it, or I like to think so. So my, my last slide is, is just to kind of give you the um, tools and resources and kind of the things that we've been doing. And I, I know we're kind of quite a large organization. We've got nearly 300 staff. Um, so not all these will be relevant to everybody, but you might get, get something out of it. So um, through this last year, um, I have developed a staff wellbeing policy um, and, I'm, and I'm now working on a wellbeing strategy for, for both staff and students and our whole community in, in, in the college. Um, 
we have a, a college management team project on emotional intelligence, which is um, encouraging students to look at their emotional intelligence through the tutorial program and help and helping them build their resilience through that. Um, we've raised awareness, we have newsletters, we have all star emails. And something that I've been doing for the last five years since I've been here is holding at the end of the academic year a well-being fair where we we invite people in for talks, we um, provide the odd massage, um, we have people, um, we have stalls and stands from people like Mind or the local gym um, and the cycle to work scheme for example um, and, and we have some of our teachers um, letting us play with their kits so this year we're going to be using the pottery wheel um, for a bit of bit of mindfulness um, and, and we've also been um, uh, promoting um, five minute kind of exercise classes on podcasts for, for staff and students as well from our sports team so so we're kind of using our own to help to help promote those five ways to well-being that I mentioned at the at the beginning of this um, it's important to be there encouraging people to talk trying to create those water cooler moments that you're missing those kind of conversations that you have when you're going to grab a cup of tea um, so kind of having um, 10 minutes at uh, once a week or half an hour once a week where you say this is not a work call this is just a, a, a chat call where, where, where you can with your teams just just to talk a load of nonsense if you want to um, there are a lot of resources online we have an online training package but there are a lot of free resources online there are webinars about resilience and other well-being resources that you can look at we have a, um, an employee assistant program which is a 24 our seven day a week phone line that provides counselling and support to our staff that we signpost people to. Um, but, but also we signpost people to Richmond Borough Mind, the Samaritans and, and all those other things as well. So we have a, a staff intranet where we keep these resources on. So, um, so that's what I had to share with you and I'd be interested to hear if there are any anything at, at the end and also what the experts now now tell us.